Having come through the formative years of the Premier League and those years of exponential growth, it's been quite nice to come to America where Major League Soccer is enjoying a similar surge in popularity and profile. And also, as a commentator, to be part of that has actually been quite exciting. What a pass! Michael Owen wins it! Because it's far from the same role here in America. The difference in the role here is that you're the presenter, the front man, as well as the commentators. Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to Providence Park. John Champion. I have to stand up in front of the camera and welcome the nation into the broadcast and maybe talk to my co-commentator for a while. And then back we come from the commercial break and I turn into the commentator at that stage and pick up my lip microphone and my notes and commentate on the game as I would have done before. Junior Esso through the middle, scores! and silences the Timbers army. Orlando ahead on the west coast again. My job is not to get in the way. It's almost to be a facilitator more than anything else. And whilst, yes, it's my job to occasionally be noticed by coming up with a nice line and a commentary, it's also my job to make sure that I steer the whole broadcast in the right direction. I'm, the, I'm if you like, the captain of the ship, I suppose. You do get, generally, our exciting spectacles here, games played at quite a pace, quite a tempo, and therefore, as a commentator, you have to be on your metal because things do happen quickly here. For parity, with ten minutes to play. If you talked to me 40 years ago, when I was a teenager, and said, your life is going to be getting paid to watch football, only having to talk for a living, I'd have said, you're mad, there's no chance. Well, when I was 19, the only sport I could play to any sort of reasonable level was cricket. And I played in a match one day in my home city of York and got a few runs and retired to the bar afterwards and had had probably three or four pints of excellent Yorkshire bitter. The old payphone in the corner of the, the clubhouse bar rang and someone shouted, Lloyd, John, come and talk to Radio York. I went across without giving it a second thought and they wanted to interview me about my innings that day. So I waxed lyrical, put the phone down, went back, had several formal drinks and then went home and didn't give it a second thought. Two weeks later, there was a phone call out of the blue from the sports editor of this radio station to say they were looking for a few people to do some reporting on football and rugby and they'd really liked the sound of my voice and thought I sounded very fluent. I had nothing uh, pending in my life. And so I did it, and three weeks later there was another phone call to say, actually, you're rather good at this. You could make a career out of this. And that, fortunately for me, is precisely what happened. I think all of us that do my job would acknowledge that you have to have some good fortune and luck along the way. I was just so lucky to be the radio commentator at Selhurst Park the night that Eric Cantona decided to jump in the crowd. Those pictures, even now, more than a quarter of a century on, are iconic. But little did I know, when I was trying my best to describe that extraordinary moment, that the head of BBC Sport was listening in his bath in London, and they were looking for a young commentator. I think there's no real reason why a good radio commentator should necessarily become an excellent TV commentator. It's a really tricky transition. I got a year's trial, which then became a permanent job, so I have a lot to thank Eric for. I just remember the thrills and spills of the early years of the Premier League. Newcastle always come to mind, that Newcastle side of the, the mid-90s under Kevin Keegan. The greatest entertainers I think the Premier League has ever had. We had the famous rant against Ferguson as well. I'd love it, I'd love it. If we beat them, love it. We had so many of those moments, great stories, and big characters as well that helped illuminate those early years of the Premier League. Whatever happens, people will be talking about this game for days and weeks to come. At various times in Premier League history, the fixture you wanted to get has been different. But I would say that for my core years in the Premier League, Manchester United Arsenal was pretty much it. A landmark occasion in every English Premier League season as the two super heavyweights meet. Old Trafford is the setting for a game Sir Alec Ferguson has already described this week as the match of the decade. They were undoubtedly the top two teams and there was that personal enmity that was so evident between Ferguson and this urbane Frenchman, Arsene Wenger, who'd helped to change the face of English football. Those two teams had played each other so often with such high stakes that it was always going to kick off. We had so many of those moments, great stories and big characters as well. It's 
it's always special when Arsenal pay a visit here. If people ever stop me in the street and want to talk about the Premier League, that is a game that comes up time after time. Every twist was what you would least think was going to happen next. 3-3! Three, three. In the midst of this was this amazing performance by Andre Arshavin to score not once, not twice, not three times, but four! I, I think it just left us shaking our heads, and it was a game of unending drama. The script just bore no relevance, really, to what you would expect to happen. It's a day the like of which Sir Alec Ferguson has rarely seen before. His United team dismantled by the noisy neighbours. I think the biggest watershed moment would be commentating on the Manchester derby, when the noisy neighbours didn't just knock on the front door, but bashed it off its hinges. I think watching that, there was a, a sense that uh, a new era was dawning, and we'd known it was on its way, but it was the day that it arrived and the confirmation. Couldn't be six, could it? It could, you know. It's not so much a case of Manchester City are coming. I think we can take it from this, that they have arrived. That one stays with me as uh, the end of one era and the beginning of another. It's been and continues to be a wonderful privilege to do this job. Even now, I pinch myself occasionally and think, am I really doing this? And is someone really paying me to do this? Longevity is, is a good measure of whether someone's been successful or not. And I'm up to 38 years, so I'm hoping to keep going for a good while yet.